Now, one of you, one of my uh, followers, asked me a very specific question about one specific type of isopod and said, hey, Biggs, can you go and do a care sheet on this species? Well, today, this is for you, my friend. Today, we're going to be tackling this bin right here. And these are my Armadillidium gestroi. They're an absolutely incredible isopod. So let's get into it. These incredible isopods, Armadillidium gestroi, described by Tua back in 1900. The reference materials for the original description are still held at the Natural History Museum in London, UK, and were named in the honor of the Italian entomologist Raffaello Gestro. These are absolutely one of the largest in the genera Armadillidium. And some of these can grow to larger than two centimeters, or over three quarters of an inch. They are incredibly active and outgoing. Their native range is primarily in Italy, in the Savona region. And some documented reports have shown them distribution to occur as well in southern France. Armadillidium gestroi is a slower reproducing species, partially due to its size. It takes a little bit longer for it to reach sexual maturity. And it is also slightly more calcium dependent than some of the others of the same genera. They have been found in the woodlands, in amongst leaf litter, as well as coastal areas with calciferous cliffs, hence the need for a stronger level of calcium. As with other members of this genera, they are all detritivores. Armadillidium gestroi's diet is comprised primarily of leaf litter, decaying plant matter. Now I feed a variety of alternative foods besides the plant matter and white rock woods. I offer slices of squash, sweet potato, I'm a big fan of the supreme isopide chow, tropical fish flakes and pellets, prepared gel diets, and I also rely heavily from our armadillidium species on live mosses and lichens. Now, one thing that is really unique about this species is that they are a sexually dichromatic species, whereas the males and females can be distinguished via their color. Females of this species tend to have a lighter colored skirt when compared to the darker males. So if you see them on their side, from a profile, the females tend to be lighter colored, almost gray, versus the male, the black of the carapace runs all the way down. All members of the genus Armadillidium can roll up in those tight little balls that gives them that affectionate name that most of us know as a common name of pill bugs. Whenever they feel threatened, all that do, all the little crustacean does is roll up into that tight little armored ball until such and when it feels it's safe to come out. It can resume exploring its environment. Come on out, little guy. There we go. And it can resume its day. Fascinating creatures. This is the container that I keep my Armadillidium gestroian. I absolutely love these units. They have a gasket, so they're nice and secure. They have four locking tabs. You can't see them, but there's four locking tabs on. I've talked about these bins many, many times in many of my videos. I installed four vents from round vents. And as this is one of the larger species of Armadillidium, this species I have no issue with contamination whatsoever. I have no none of the offspring get out through these vents or anything, so it works absolutely ideal for them. Uh, the one thing I, I, I do notice, I see a lot of people tend to use in their isopods, they often use cork slabs. Cork offers absolutely nothing to the animals, so I tend to prefer finding nice, natural, hardwood slabs. These ones being oak. 
Now, these are slabs that I've harvested off of dead trees. I've got forests all around me and it's a very prevalent species, so it's easy to access. I just shot a bunch of videos, so there's obviously not very many isopods on the slabs, but they were all there earlier. So we got a couple of nice big slabs. You notice the size of the bins. These bins are nice in size. They're almost, I think they're 21 inches long. So there's a lot of surface area. I use my nice organic substrate mix. My organic is, you know, it's comprised of all sorts of different things. We'll talk about that a bit more in detail. You know, access, there's calcium sources through cuttle bone. There's calcium carbonate in the substrates. All sorts of organic naturally harvested leaf litter. We've got all sorts of products of uh, uh, white rot woods. That's not it, but there's white rot woods of products that are in my substrate mix. Charcoal, so forth, all that leaf litter. And then one of the components that I absolutely love the best, particularly for herbivorous or detritivore species such as the armadillidiums, is they tend to be primarily main diet is, is decaying vegetation or vegetable matter. And I really, if you look at this piece here, this is, you know, all covered in lichens and so forth. This piece, when we shot video, was absolutely covered with isopods. There's another calcium source, another cuddle bone. And as you can see, they're all throughout it. And they've really, really worked that product down. Lift up the other slab. Same thing. I also use, uh, these are our, our ferment for the saltwater trade. These are harvested slabs of either limestone or calciferous uh, coral or dead rock, and they've been cut into these sections. They're generally sold in the aquarium trade for fragging of corals. It gives a nice flat surface to adhere little pieces of coral to for culturing. But uh, for isopods, I find them very, very well, and you can see they, 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 they basically create their own little city within it. And I just put some of the loose mosses and so forth over top of it. So lots of moss, lots of organic natural substrate, calcium sources, everything they're going to need. And you notice that I have the, the slabs of wood tend to go across, across the entire unit. They go from humid sources to more dry sources, allowing the animals an access bridge to finding the humi humidity gradient that they find to their best liking. Now for watering, as you guys have seen in many of my videos, I use reverse osmosis water. This species, as mentioned, is fairly humidity dependent. So it's a bit, it's a bit more higher dependent higher humidity than say some of the other armadillidium species. So as I keep all my mossy areas nice and moist, it provides a nice humidity gradient within the enclosure for all the animals to find the place that they works best for them. Have to remember, isopods are not bugs, they are crustaceans. And as crustaceans, they need that constant humidity to be able to breathe because they breathe through lungs. Sorry, gills. Go and make a statement and then make it wrong. <laughs> but other than the calcium sources and a few of the components of my substrate mix, almost most of my components I can access locally in my forest. And they are absolutely thriving. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's species profile on this incredible isopod jet black with those beautiful yellow dots. It'll always be a showcase in anyone's collection. So until next time, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. Take care. Uh -oh.